this lecture, I want to cover some more reactions um, that, that we see often in biological systems that are similar to the things that we've studied in organic chemistry classes elsewhere. First one I want to talk about is the um, Michael slash uh, one four conjugate addition reaction. So that's typically a reaction that we see of an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, where if we consider um, a, a sort of uh, resonance structure of this, where we push the electrons through, we see that we have a spot with a negative charge and a positive charge. And so it's this positive charge that reminds us that a nucleophile can add at the beta position. or beta to a carbonyl. <clears throat> With that in mind, we can start to see why the following reaction occurs. If we look at this trans or E alkene, we can see conjugate addition of water could occur at a site that's beta to the CO2, because recall that a CO2 minus is a carbonyl attached to an O minus. And so this is facilitated by an enzyme where we see addition to form this di-negatively charged species, actually has three negative charges, <clears throat> where the one of the negative charges could come down and grab an H plus while the H plus and the OH falls off. That's going to give rise to this structure, which is um, malate. So malate is a, is a common just organic molecule you see floating around biological systems, <clears throat> important in several metabolic pathways, and it's formed by just a run-of-the-mill conjugate addition reaction. Okay, so um, continuing onward with carbonyl addition reactions, we can talk about acyl substitution reactions. So in acyl substitution reactions, what we consider is we take a carboxylic acid derivative and I'll just draw it with some sort of generic X leaving group. We add a nucleophile. It's going to push the electrons on the carbonyl up to form a tetrahedral intermediate which then collapses to kick out the X group or the leaving group, and that makes a new carboxylic acid derivative. <clears throat> okay, so this is an acyl substitution reaction. Note that the reaction, the substitution process is not in SN2-like process, rather it involves addition and then elimination by way of a tetrahedral intermediate. Okay, so we've talked about this in organic too when we talked about making esters, esters from acid chlorides and you know anhydrides and that sort of thing. But in biology, we're going to use different types of carboxylic acid derivatives. I guess the amide is a big one, but when we talked about that in organic too, it was in the context of polypeptides anyway. So there's my amide slash peptide. Now, if we go to the next one up in terms of reactivity, we're going to go to the ester. Okay, we've seen the ester before. <clears throat> After that, we're going to see a thioester. Now, a thioester is more reactive um, than an ester, it turns out. I mean, there's sulfur atoms a little bit more polarizable, so it's a better leaving group um, from the tetrahedral intermediate. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's, it's also um, less electronegative, that sort of thing. It's just a better leaving group from the tetrahedral intermediate. So we're going to see that react a bit more efficiently than an ester. And all of those are not as good as the most reactive and most awkward one we'll see. And that's the acyl phosphate. So there's a phosphate group again, OPO, double bond on top, single bond on the, bo on the bottom, negative charges on the O's that aren't attached to anything else, but this is an acyl phosphate. 
and this is our most reactive. It kind of takes the place of the acid chloride, which is not water sta stable. I mean, and acyl phosphate is barely stable enough. Okay. So we're gonna go through additional eliminations involving these things. Now it turns out that for the most part, you can, it depends on the situation, but um, for the most part, you have an enzyme that's facilitating these additional elimination sequences. You don't have things just happening spontaneously. I mean, if you have an ACL phosphate in the right environment without an enzyme, you can get the reaction to occur, but most of these additional eliminations require an enzyme to intervene. Okay, so for example, we could have a polypeptide, which can react with water. So here's just a dipeptide that is, um, <clears throat> or excuse me, just, just an amide from an amino acid. Okay, it's an amide of an amino acid, and we can let this react with water, where water is our nucleophile to give rise to a carboxylic acid plus a free amine. But it turns out that amides, in particular amides in, in polypeptide chains, are not, um, are not that reactive with water. That's why they can exist in water. And so we usually need an enzyme called a um, protease, which is an enzyme that's good at converting, um, at cleaving or disrupting and breaking um, amide bonds <clears throat> using um, net, with, with net kind of water addition by way of an additional elimination sequence. Okay, some other reactions involving additions to carbonyls are um, carbonyl uh, nucleophile reactions. So carbonyl nucleophile reactions are ones that involve an enolate or an enolate equivalent. So if we have an enolate, we can just add that enolate to an electrophile. If you recall, an enolate is a structure where we have an oxygen with a negative charge next to a carbon-carbon double bond. We can push this down and over to reach onto an electrophile. And that's formed by way of deprotonation, the, deprotonating the alpha position of a carbonyl. I guess I've installed some R groups. Let me get those out of here. <clears throat> Okay, so we could have some base grabbing the alpha position of a carbonyl and pushing the electrons through to give rise to an enolate structure. These are really important reactions in um, biological processes, and they do um, <clears throat> two types of reactions. Um, for the most part, they do the aldol reaction and a Claisen condensation. So an aldol reaction So like this, we're going to take our enolate and allow it to react with another carbonyl. That carbonyl is usually like an aldehyde or something. So we take our enolate or our enolate equivalent and do a, an aldol reaction. And if you look, this looks to be the exact same reaction that we saw in organic chemistry one. It's just what biology needs to do is to find a way to grapple with the formation of these stereocenters, and it does so using a chiral enzyme environment. Now a reaction I'm not sure I spent as much time talking about in organic two was the Claisen condensation. The Claisen condensation involves forming an enolate and then adding that enolate to a carboxylic acid derivative by way of an additional elimination sequence. So typically, our carboxylic acid derivative is a thioester, or it could be an acyl phosphate. So this is what happens in a biological environment where the negative charge comes, it shoots up during the addition sequence of our addition elimination mechanism. And this is an interesting product to draw. I'm gonna keep the carbonyl with the two R groups same, and I'm gonna make a new bond out here. So there's my tetrahedral intermediate. Now my SR is going to be my leaving group here. Comes down and we lose 
SR. Now what you get is instead of a beta hydroxy carbonyl, which is what you obtain from an aldol reaction, we're going to instead get a beta keto carbonyl or a beta carbonyl carbonyl. We put a carb another carbonyl in the system, beta to our original carbonyl that was involved in the um, enolate. Okay, so looking through, we see um, <clears throat> the book also describes several elimination reactions. Those elimination reactions are the same as what we saw previously. We have E1 reactions. I guess I'm just gonna go over these at the organic two level. E1 has a carbocation. E2 is no intermediates. So we have the positively charged intermediate, the no intermediate, and then the E1CB is an E1 E1 reaction. It's not an E1, it's an E1CB. This is the, the opposite of a carbocation E1 reaction. This is one that involves a carb anion intermediate, carb anion intermediate or negatively charged. And basically what happens here is H plus is lost first, whereas in the E1 reaction, H plus is lost last. Okay, <clears throat> so if we look at this, we have our H in our X group. In the E2 reaction, the X, the uh, base, whoop, I shouldn't, I, I'm gonna draw a base over here, sorry. The base pulls off the protons, the electrons come down, we fire off the leaving group and we're left with an alkene. In the E1 process, the leaving group leaves first, form a carbocation and then the H plus leaves to form our alkene. So we have a carbocation intermediate forming. That's actually different from the E1CB reaction where the H plus is lost first by the base to give us negative charge at this position, which then kicks off the leaving group second. So it's just flipping the steps around from the E1 reaction. We call it the E1 CB, CB for, um, <clears throat> typically you see these things with uh, at carbonyl positions, that is you deprotonate the alpha position, forming a stabilized enolate, which then eliminates some sort of leaving groups. That's where the CB comes from. It's not like a weird thing for carbanion. Okay, um, there are uh, other reactions. What I wanna do is I wanna jump to a specific example of a pericyclic reaction. It's one of my favorite um, reactions that, that's present in a biochemical system. And that's the, um, the pericyclic reaction is important for um, this pericyclic reaction is important for the construction of one of our favorite amino acids. And that's the Claisen rearrangement. So the general synopsis of a Claisen rearrangement is that you have a 3-3 sigmatropic rearrangement, proceeds this way, where you've got a vinyl allyl ether. Vinyl because you've got, I could do this. Here's our vinyl position. Here's our allyl position. <clears throat> These undergo a 3 3 sigmatropic rearrangement called the Claisen rearrangement to give rise to a carbonyl. So the driving force for this reaction is forming a stable carbonyl CO double bond. And you could do that reaction on an interesting biological molecule which is charismate. <clears throat> so it's a little bit, sorry, I ran out of space, CO2 minus, there we go. So it's, it's kind of interesting. You have your allyl, your allyl ether right here and your vinyl ether group right here. So we can push the arrows through to give 
from this starting molecule, which is chorismate, we get this fun molecule. I really mean that. This fun molecule, so we do a little bit more highlighting. Well, that bond breaks, sorry, let's go here. There is our CO um, <coughs> double bond. And then what we can do is if we introduce NAD plus, NAD plus is our oxidizing thing that accepts nucleophilic H's. We can let this CO2 group leave as CO2 minus and that's going to look like we're taking the dashed electrons and putting them into the ring. Let's push the electrons through to establish an aromatic ring and donate the H uh, minus equivalent onto NAD plus to make NADH. So we lose NADH and we lose CO2, the gas. And what we get is a phenol that is an aromatic molecule that's also an alpha keto acid. So what we can do with this alpha keto acid is add a PLP enzyme to kind of complete the circle of the lecture, excuse me, these lectures where we looked at making amino acids and that converts the alpha position of our alpha keto acid into, I'm just gonna draw this here, a configurationally controlled, that is a single enantiomer of an amine. And now we have an amino acid and this amino acid is tyrosine. S tyrosine as a single enantiomer. Okay, that'll do it for chapter one on just some general reactions from biological conditions um, until, uh, and then we'll move on to chapter two in an upcoming lecture. Okay, we'll see you guys later.